Hey guys, Jeremy and Stephanie Oversurf coming to you from Skill Level Up on a rainy Memorial Day. Just jumped out of the pool, so forgive the pool hair and the Karen. background noise. <laughs> Might be a little rainy, so we're going to hope this sound is okay. So today we wanted to talk about you business owners. What's the, one of the tough things you have to do is let somebody go. You're fired. That's right. <laughs> it's a... I don't know. I guess it's harder. What do you think is harder for when they quit or for when you have to let them go? That's a tough one. I mean, they're kind of equally both hard. Um, it's definitely, I guess I'm going to go with when you have to let them go because there's so much anticipation, like, you know, it's coming and you have to prepare for it and think about what you're going to say. It's kind of like ripping off the bandaid when they do it yeah. because it's just happened. Both of them are hard, but yeah, I know what you're saying. Sometimes the anticipation of letting somebody go is harder because you're like, are they going to freak out? Are they going <laughs> to do something crazy? Right. Sometimes you don't know what's going to go what's going to go down when they yeah. quit or versus when you when they get fired versus when they quit. Yeah. So, I know you had some talking points you wanted to talk about. Since yeah. I'll let you kind of <laughs> lead the way on this one, and I'll it was shoot in my input. I had, um, because it came up recently, you know, um, when you grow and you have a lot more employees and staff and things like that. Not that you ever want it to come up more frequently, but maybe it does because you have, there's a lot of moving parts in a business. Um, but I was actually remembering the first time I had to actually do it and let someone go. Uh, all the anticipation and fear. And do you remember the first time you had to fire somebody? <laughs> yeah, I remember like I read all these books and got all this coaching of how to do it. And I like... Walked him out to the parking lot with my <laughs> arm around him and just tried to be super gentle. Yeah. I don't really do it that way anymore. No, I mean, now being in business so long and having gone through so many employees and stuff like that, it's just, you know, it's kind of a matter of fact thing. To be honest, a lot of times they might know it's coming. You know it's coming. You've probably talked to them a few times about whatever the... Should we talking to Mike since it's oh, yeah. noisy out? You might have talked to them a few times about the performance or the behavior, whatever it is that has been an issue or a problem. So it really probably shouldn't be that much of a surprise to either person, right? Yeah, it better not be too big of a surprise or, or else you're doing something wrong as a leader. They should yeah. kind of know it's coming. They should You should have already talked to them ahead of time. Maybe you've given them written warnings. You, you have a procedure hopefully in place at your company for how you fire somebody. Unless it's something just so far off the wall that you really just have to let them go right then. Yeah. Then you may not be able to do those procedures. But otherwise, they shouldn't be shocked when they get fired. If so, you're doing something wrong. Right. Definitely, they should have been talked to before about that. But um, so one of the main things I wanted to talk about is don't delay the firing or the letting go. Because it can be very tempting. You know, maybe you're thinking, if I let this person go... I'm going to have to step in, especially if you're a small company, you don't have a lot of people to cover certain areas. Maybe you let this person go and that means you're going to have to step in and pick up the pieces, fill in your service company, you know, get back on the truck, so to speak, go out and perform services, whatever it is. It can be tempting to not let someone go because you don't want to do that. You've had a taste of the freedom and, you know, so you kind of overlook those discrepancies, those things that they're doing wrong to delay it. So I'm going to caution you not to do that because you don't want to prolong the problem or let some behavior happen that should be dealt with and maybe it's not even a fit for your company anymore and it's something that really should as a fireable offense or something like that. Just don't let it keep going because you're afraid of that. Things will, there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of fish in the sea. There's a lot of good candidates that you can replace that person with. So don't put up with some bad behavior, some negative behavior in your company just because you're afraid to have to fill that role for a little bit. Yeah, I'd say if anything, most people are keeping people too long. Um, maybe not firing quick enough. I think what's the saying, like, hire slow, fire fast. Yeah. Like, you don't want to keep the wrong person around too long because they can really be a bad influence. If you have other employees, yeah. they can be a bad influence on your good employees. and. All of a sudden, you've got, you know, we talk about A, B, and C players. You've got your C players dragging down the A players, dragging down the B players, and now all of a sudden, you've got an underperforming team, and that's not, that's the last thing you want. You want people overperforming what they 
you know, what their ability level is. Right, and maybe you're an amazing employer, it's an amazing company, but you have this one person who's not happy about something, and they're planting seeds in your good employees you, of like, oh, well, this happened, or they don't do that. You don't want that happening either. And so if you can sense that there's someone who is a negative seed, somebody who's causing issues or just not even performing well, it's not worth um, keeping them for an extended period of time just to delay the inevitable really. Yeah, some people are like, just stir too much stuff up and they're kind of like a virus. In a computer virus, you have one little virus and corrupt the whole computer. And so it's the same thing with your company. You can have one person that's corrupting a lot of things, a lot of the moving parts, and it can really be detrimental to the whole team. So you have to sometimes root that out, figure out one person can, like, letting that person go can clear up so much energy, can clear up so much space in your company. Everybody else can be getting along better. Things can be more productive, more efficient. Sometimes you do, you achieve more by getting rid of someone, even though it seems counterproductive. Yeah, I was just kind of reminiscing to some of the people we've had to let go or part ways with before. And it's funny, like, it, it always feels a lot better afterward. It's almost like a weight is lifted. People come in happier. There's a better energy in the office. And really, you just have to protect that culture. Maybe that's a topic for another video that we could do at some point is the culture and your company and the environment you have. But you're just always guarding that culture. You want to make sure that the company is feeling there's a good feeling there overall about the company the employees the clients that you're serving and things like that and you really have to guard it and make sure that everyone's up to par making a good being a good fit you know what i'm trying to say yeah like, yeah i remember one guy that we had he was such a smart ass and that's kind of <laughs> what got him fired but he was telling us like you're already understaffed. How are you? You're not gonna fire me. I said I'd rather do the job myself than to have you here. Like, yeah. some people are just so toxic. You're better off with less people. You actually get more done with, with some people in the mix. It's true. It is better because I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. Like, it was a lot better to have that energy out of the building. Exactly. So, yeah. All right. What's your next talking point? You've got. So remember the first time. Don't delay because you have to step in. Um, it can be hard. Did we talk about that one? Um, no, not. I mean, a little bit. We hinted on it, but it definitely can be a hard thing. So, you know, anytime you're going to let someone go or even hire somebody, like you're affecting their livelihood. You know, so for me personally, I don't know about you, but that has been hard for me too. Letting people go, I'm thinking, wow, this person's responsible for paying the bills in this family or yeah. paying the rent here. Or so, they have kids or something yeah. like that. So you feel bad, but I think about something that one of our business coaches told us before. He said, you know, you can't play God to everybody. So, and that's kind of always stuck with me. You know, I'm not responsible for their life, for what they, how they maintain their bills or whatever. Like, that's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to my company and my other employees. And I have to safeguard that because if I'm not taking care of a problem, then it can affect everyone else and sometimes you're doing them a favor because sometimes it's yeah. not the right fit it's usually not the right fit for them too so you, you're kind of like setting them free and letting them go find a place that they fit in better that they that they excel at maybe they're doing so poorly here because it's not the right job for them so so think about you sometimes you've thought losing that job was the best thing that ever happened to me like at the moment it seems terrible mm -hmm. but then in a the big picture something better came along so you kind of have to think of it like that that's a good point. Um, it can be like a sense of relief to some people yeah. because they know that it hasn't been a good fit or they're not performing um, and they're uncomfortable. So it can, it can actually be a sense of relief. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And like you said, you have to take care of your company first. Like if the company goes downhill, then what, what good does it do to save that one person's job? If you cost everybody else their job and you cost your family your livelihood. So it's just... You have to look for the greater good of the company sometimes. You know, it might sound cold, but sometimes that's just the truth. Mm -hmm. And honestly, yeah. they, should, they shouldn't they should have been doing what they were doing. <laughs> usually to get fired, you don't want to fire people. You're usually not looking for reasons to fire people. Yeah. They're usually, like, had several chances at our company anyway. So if they're getting fired, it's kind of their own deal. We you can't... You can't <laughs> 
protect them from that. No, I mean, in fact, we've given people so many chances before because of that first point I mentioned. We don't want to have to jump back in and do things. Well, so. training is hard, too. Yeah. You, don't, you invest a lot of time and money in people training. Like, I tell my guys the first 30 to 90 days, I'm not making any money off of you because I'm training you, and True. you don't know what you're doing yet. You're not productive yet. So I don't want to have to fire you after I spend all this time, like, basically – paying other guys to teach you how to do your job and paying you for not really being productive. So why would I look for a reason to fire you? I'm not looking to, but I also don't want to disrupt my company and what up the good things I have going on. True. Yeah. So. All right. So let's hit your other one. So necessary. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Just, you know, kind of those, those are the main points, but sometimes it's necessary. It's, it's necessary. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just a fact of business, you know, it's, it's going to come up at some point. I think we went for, Oh, we really didn't go that long before we had to fire somebody. I was well, we went <laughs> a year. You think a year? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but the bottom line is, to be successful, you're going to have to do some At tough, some point, tough things. Yeah. You have to do some things in life that are not easy. You have to make some uncomfortable phone calls. You have to talk to some uncomfortable clients. You have to un- talk to have difficult discussions with employees. You have to fire people. You have to hire people. You have to. It's just not comfortable being successful. I think too, one other point is like, you just have to be okay being the bad guy sometimes. Yeah. You know, you just- not liked. Yeah, you just, and that's something for me, I really had to work at even now, it really bothers me (laughs) because of my personality style. If I think someone's unhappy with me personally or whatever. So like, you just have to kind of overcome that because in a business, you know, if you're making everyone happy all of the time, then you're doing something wrong. Yeah, you're not making yourself happy if that's the case, usually. Right. Somebody is going to be unhappy with you at some point, whether it's a client or an employee, a vendor, whatever. Someone's going to be unhappy with you. So you just kind of have to be okay with that and just realize, you know, this is this is not the right fit for us. And, you know. And we're not saying don't take good care of your employees. No, not at um, all. I mean, like I said, we extend a lot of grace to our people. We go above and beyond to try to keep them, try to keep them happy, try mm-hmm. to do what we can to make sure they're successful. But there comes a point, you know, when you have employees that these difficult conversations are going to have to happen at some point. You're probably, you're going to have to have some, to let go of somebody. Um, yeah. So you might as well kind of get used to that reality. So I guess that was the point of this video. Like the thought behind it is just, you know, kind of to give you some reassurance that it's going to happen at some point. Just kind of embrace it. And never attack the person individually. Just focus on what they did wrong. Right. You know, hopefully the behavior. You, yes, the behavior. And hopefully you have some, you know, some documentation of, you know, what happened or whatever. And maybe yeah. you talk to them before. Try to get things in writing. Mm-hmm. That's always a better way to handle it. Because then you can say, look, you know, it's not you. <laughs> You're, this is just not being followed. You're not following the system. It's not you personally. It's the action. So kind of some reassurance yeah. that it's going to happen you know it happens to every company and just don't sometimes you have to separate too am i being objective do i just not like this person and they're doing a good job or True. are they actually so sometimes you want to get a second opinion too before you fire somebody and maybe if it's not a serious offense they're committing maybe just watch it for a little bit just be a silent observer and see what's going on and do i need to take action or am i overreacting because sometimes too with your business it's your baby so you can overreact sometimes too. So sometimes it's good to step back and try to be as objective as you can about it. And maybe it's not a fireable offense. Maybe it's a learning process. And it's another thing we learned from our coach. Is it? Is it a? Um, what's the, the uh, saying? Is it behavioral issue or? Um, yeah. Is it like <laughs> something they don't know or? I forget how. An attitude issue or. Aptitude. aptitude. That's what it is. Yeah. Is it attitude? They have a bad attitude and don't want to do it or aptitude they just don't really know how to do it yet and they just need more training so that's another thing you need to examine before you fire too like do they really know what they're supposed to be doing have you laid it out clear to them have you showed them have you watched them do they know how to do it and if they do then is it just that they're they don't want to do it or they just refuse to do it Mm. right yeah so yeah some, some good things to think about hiring firing you know the tough parts about you know this is what you signed up for when you started your own business yeah. it may not you may not have <laughs> thought of that you may have thought you just get to be the widget maker and you get to do it by yourself without a boss on your back but that's not the case if you want to grow you have to have employees and 
when you have employees, there's a whole other dynamic that comes with it. Yeah, there certainly is. So. so learn the skill of managing and leading employees. So that's our lesson for today. You know, I know we're a little bit late on this video. We've got a lot of stuff, a lot of projects we're working on. So week, we're going to yeah. try to keep cranking out some more videos. So if you can like, subscribe, share, do all that stuff because that really helps the algorithm on YouTube and helps more people see this stuff. And we really want as many people to see it as possible so we can help more people. Yeah. So thank you. So all right. Much. Bye, everybody.